Hare Krishna, my dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just next to the English Channel. Um, we're here trying to trying to celebrate Prabhupada's books. We're trying to celebrate Srila Prabhupada's books. The spoken kirtan of Srila Prabhupada spread Krishna consciousness all over the world and is still doing it, as testified by the wonderful photos we're getting of uh, Krishna's devotees on, out on the streets smile with giving books to people with big smiles on their faces as they taste the nectar of Lord Chaitanya's mercy and Srila Prabhupada's mercy. So let us celebrate these books by hearing them together, trying to understand them together, and then more, most importantly to apply them into our own characters, into our own daily lives, into how we treat one another, how we deal with problems and situations. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram Sanatana Goswami celebrating the Srimad Bhagavatam. It goes like this. Sarva Shastrabdi Piyusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dwandoditaditya, Sri Krishna Paribartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshak Shadayate, Sarvada Sarvasevyaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you, who were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Marika Bando Matsangin Mad Guru Mad Mahadana Manishtadaga Mad Bhagya Mad Anandana Mastute My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu ta dayin ati ni chuchata kada anamun chagada chin mam premna ret kanta yokspuda. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we've reached the fourth chapter of the second um, canto of Srimad Bhagavatam the process of creation we're, begin, we're being taken through the science of devotional service by Shukadeva Goswami and Sutta Goswami who heard Sutta Goswami was 
sitting uh, close enough to Shukadeva Goswami to hear the Bhagavatam and he's repeating it again um, to the sages at Amisharanya. So we have different conversations going on here, you know, overlapping one another. We're starting with text 7. Kindly describe how the Supreme Lord, who is all-powerful, engages his different energies and different expansions in maintaining and again winding up the phenomenal world in, a sp in the sporting spirit of a player. Purport In the Kata Upanishad 2.2.13 the Supreme Lord is described as the chief eternal being amongst all other eternal individual beings. Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chaitanam <clears throat> and the one Supreme Lord who maintains innumerable other individual living beings Eko Bahunam Yo Vididati Kaman So all living entities both in the conditioned state and in the liberated state are maintained by the Almighty Supreme Lord Such maintenance is effected by the Lord through his different expansions of self and three principal energies, namely the internal, external, and marginal energies. The living entities are his marginal energies, and some of them, in the confidence of the Lord, are entrusted with the work of creation also, as are Brahma, Marichi, and so on. And the acts of creation are inspired by the Lord unto them, Tenhi Brahma Rida. The external energy, Maya, is impregnated with the jivas or conditioned souls. The unconditioned marginal potency acts in the spiritual kingdom. And the Lord, by his different plenary expansions, maintains them in different transcendental relations displayed in the spiritual sky. So the one Supreme Personality of Godhead manifests himself in many, Bahu Syam, and thus all diversities are in him, and he is in all diversities, although he is nevertheless different from all of them. That is the inconceivable mystic power of the Lord and as such, everything is simultaneously one with and different from him by his inconceivable potencies. Achintya bedha bedha tattva. Text 8. O learned Brahmana, the transcendental activities of the Lord are all wonderful and they appear inconceivable because even great endeavors by many learned scholars have still proved insufficient for understanding them. Purport The acts of the Supreme Lord in the creation of just this one universe appear inconceivably wonderful. And there are innumerable universes and all of them aggregated together are known as the created material world. And this part of his creation is only a fractional portion of the complete creation. The material world stands as a part only. Ekang shena stito jagat. Supposing that the material world is a display of one part of his energy, the remaining three parts consist of the Vaikuntha Jagat or spiritual world described in the Bhagavad Gita as Mad Dhamma or Sanatan Dhamma or the eternal world. We have marked in the previous verse that he creates and again winds up the creation. This action is applicable only in the material world because the other greater part of his creation namely the Vaikuntha world, 
is neither created nor annihilated. Otherwise, the Vaikuntha Dham would not have been called eternal. The Lord exists with His Dhamma, His eternal name, qualities, pastimes, entourage, and personality are all a display of His different energies and expansions. The Lord is called Anadi, or having no creator, and Adi, or the origin of all. We think in our own perfect we think in we think in our own imperfect way that the Lord is also created. But the Vedanta informs us that he is not created. Rather, everything else is created by him. Narayana Pado Vyaktat. Therefore, for the common man, these are all very wonderful matters for consideration. Even for great scholars, they are inconceivable. And thus, such scholars present theories contradictory to one another. Even for the insignificant part of his creation, this particular universe, they have no complete information as to how far this limited space extends or how many stars and planets there are, or the different conditions of those innumerable planets. Modern scientists have insufficient knowledge of all this. Some of them assert that there are 100 million planets scattered all over space. In a news release from Moscow, dated February 21st, 1960, the following piece of knowledge was relayed. Russia's well-known professor of astronomy, Boris Vorontsva Velyaminov, said that there must be an infinite number of planets in the universe inhabited by beings endowed with reason. It could be that life similar to that on Earth flourishes on such planets. Doctor of Chemistry Nikolai Sirov, covering the problem of atmosphere on other planets, pointed out that the organism of a Martian, for example, could very well adapt itself to normal existence with low body temperature. temperature. He said that he felt that the gaseous composition of the Martian atmosphere was quite suitable to sustain the life of beings which have become adapted to it. This adaptability of an organism to different varieties of planets is described in the Brahma Sangita as vibhuti binam, that is, each and every one of the innumerable planets within the universe is endowed with a particular type of atmosphere, and how advanced the living beings on each planet are in science and psychology depends on the atmosphere. Vibhuti means spe specific powers and binam means variegated. Scientists who are attempting to explore outer space and are trying to reach other planets by mechanical arrangements must know for certain that organisms adapted to the atmosphere of Earth cannot exist in the atmospheres of other planets easy journey to other planets. One has to prepare himself, therefore, to be transferred to a different planet after being relieved of the present body, as it is said in the Bhagavad Gita 9.25, Yanti Deva Vrta Devan Pitri Nyanti Prati Vrta Ha Bhutani Yanti Bhuteja Yanti Mad Yajino Pimam Those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship the ancestors will go to the ancestors. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. And those who worship me will live with me. Maharaj Pariksit's statement regarding the workings of the creative energy of the Lord discloses that he knew everything of the process of creation. Why then did he ask Shukadeva Goswami for such information? Maharaj Pariksit, being a great emperor 
a descendant of the Pandavas and a great devotee of Lord Krishna, was quite able to know considerably about the creation of the world. But that much knowledge was not sufficient. He said, therefore, that even greatly learned scholars failed to know about that, even after great effort. The Lord is unlimited, and His activities are also unfathom unfathomed. With a limited source of knowledge and with imperfect senses, any living being, up to the standard of Ramhaji, the highest perfect living being within the universe, can never imagine knowing about the unlimited. We can know something of the unlimited when it is explained by the unlimited, as has been done by the Lord Himself in the unique statements of the Bhagavad Gita. And it can also be known to some extent from realized souls like Shukadeva Goswami, who learned it from Vyasadeva, a disciple of Narada. And thus the perfect knowledge can descend by the chain of disciplic succession only, and not by any form of experimental knowledge, old or modern. Text 9. So this is Maharaj Prikshit inquiring from Shukadeva Goswami. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is one. Whether He alone acts with the modes of material nature or simultaneously expands in many forms or expands consecutively to direct the modes of nature. Text 10 Kindly, kindly clear up all these doubtful inquiries because you are not only vastly learned in the Vedic literatures and self-realized in transcendence but are also a great devotee of the Lord and are therefore as good as the Personality of Godhead. PURPORT In the Brahma Sangita, it is said that the Supreme Absolute Truth, Govinda, the Personality of Godhead, although one without a second, is infallibly expanded by innumerable forms non-different from one another. And although he is the original person, he is still ever young with permanent youthful energy. He is very difficult to know simply by learning the transcendental science of the Vedas, but he is very easily realized by his pure devotees. The expansions of different forms of the Lord, as from Krishna to Baladev, to Sankarshan, from Sankarshan to Vasudev, from Vasudev to Aniruddha, from Aniruddha to Prajumna, and then again to the second Sankarsana, and from him to the Narayana Purusha avatars, and innumerable other forms, which are compared to the constant flowing of the uncountable waves of a river, all are one and the same. They are like lamps of equal power, which kindle from one lamp to another. That is the transcendental potency of the Lord. The Vedas say that He is so complete that even though the complete identity emanates from Him, He still remains the same complete whole. Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Eva Vashishyate As such, there is no valid validity in a material conception of the Lord produced by the mental speculator. Thus he remains always a mystery for the mundane scholar. Even if he is vastly learned in the Vedic literatures, videshu durlabham adurlabham atma bhaktao. Therefore the Lord is beyond the limit of conception for mundane learned scholars, philosophers or scientists. He is easily understandable for the pure devotee because the Lord declares in the Bhagavad Gita 1855 that after surpassing the stage of knowledge when one is able to be engaged in the devotional service of the Lord then only can one know the true nature of the Lord. One cannot have any clear conception 
of the Lord or His holy name, form, attributes, pastimes, etc., unless one is engaged in the transcendental loving in His transcendental loving service. The statement of the Bhagavad Gita that one must first of all surrender unto the Lord, being freed from all other engagements, means that one must become a pure, unconditional devotee of the Lord. Only then can one know Him by the strength of devotional service. Maharaj Pariksit admitted in the previous verse that the Lord is inconceivable even for the greatest learned scholars. Why then should he again request why then should he again request Shukadev Goswami to clarify this insufficient knowledge about the Lord? The reason is clear. Not only was Shukadev Goswami vastly learned in the Vedic literatures, but he was also a great self realized soul and a powerful devotee of the Lord. A powerful devotee of the Lord is, by the grace of the Lord, more than the Lord Himself. The Personality of Godhead, Sri Ramachandra, attempted to bridge the Indian Ocean to reach the island of Lanka. But Sri Hanumanji, the unalloyed devotee of the Personality of Godhead, could cross the ocean simply by jumping over it. The Lord is so merciful upon His pure devotee that He presents His beloved devotee as more powerful than Himself. The Lord expressed Himself to be unable to save Durvasa Muni, although the Muni was so powerful that he could reach the Lord directly under material conditions. But Durvasa Muni was saved by Maharaj Amarish, a devotee of the Lord, Therefore, not only is a devotee of the Lord more powerful than the Lord, but also worship of the devotee is considered more effective than direct worship of the Lord. Mad Bhakta Pujab Jadika. The conclusion is, therefore, that a serious devotee must first approach a spiritual master who not only is well versed in the Vedic literatures but is also a great devotee with factual realization of the Lord and his different energies. Without the help of such a devotee, spiritual master, one cannot make progress in the transcendental science of the Lord. And a bona fide spiritual master like Shukadeva Goswami does not speak about the Lord only in the matter of his internal potencies, but also explains how he associates with his external potencies. The Lord's pastimes in the internal potency are displayed in his activities in Vrindavan, but the works of his external potency are directed by his features of Karunana Vashayi Vishnu, Garbhada Kashayi Vishnu, and Chiro Takashayi. Vishnu. Srila Vishwanath Chakrabarti offers his good counsel to the interested Vaishnavas when he says that they should, be inter should not be interested in hearing only about the Lord's activities in Vrindavan, like the Rasalila, but must be keenly interested in his pastimes, in the features of the Purusha avatars, in connection with Srishti Tattva creational functions. Following the examples of Maharaj Pariksit, the ideal disciple, and Shukadev Goswami, the ideal spiritual master. Text 11. Sutta Goswami said, so this is Sutta Goswami explaining to the sages at Naimisharanya the conversation between Prikshit Maharaj and Shukadev Goswami. Sutta Goswami said, When Shukadev Goswami was thus requested by the king to describe the creative energy of the Personality of Godhead, he then systematically remembered the master of the senses, Sri Krishna, 
and and to reply he properly and and to reply reply properly he spoke thus purport the devotees of the lord while delivering speeches and describing the transcendental attributes of the lord do not think that they can do anything independently they think that they can speak only what they are induced to speak by the supreme lord the master of the senses the senses of an, of the individual being are not his own the devotee knows that such senses belong to the supreme lord and that they can and that they can be properly used when they are employed for the service of the lord the instruments the senses are instruments and elements are ingredients all endowed by the lord therefore whatever an individual can do speak see and so on is under the direction of the lord only the bhagavad gita 15:15 describes this sarvasya chaham hridi sanavishto matak smritir jnanam apohanam cha no one is free to act no one is free to act freely and independently and as such one should always seek the permission of the lord to act or eat or speak and by the blessings of the lord everything done by a devotee is beyond the principles of the four defects typical of the conditioned soul text 12 Chukadev Chukadev Goswami said Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the supreme personality of Godhead who for the creation of the material world accepts the three modes of nature He is the complete whole residing within the body of everyone and his ways are inconceivable purport the material world is a manifestation of the three modes goodness passion and ignorance and the supreme lord for the creation maintenance and destruction of the material world accepts three predominating forms as brahma vishnu and shankar or shiva as vishnu he enters into every body materially created as garbhadakashai vishnu he enters into each universe and as shirdakashai vishnu he enters the body of every living being lord shri krishna being the origin the origin of all vishnu tattvas is addressed here as padak puman or purushottama as described in the bhagavad gita 15:18 he is the complete whole the purusha avatars are therefore his plenary expansions bhakti yoga is the only process by which one can become competent to know him because the empiric philosophers and mystic yogis cannot conceive of the personality of godhead he is called anupalaksha vartmane the lord of the inconceivable way or bhakti yoga text 13 i again offer my respectful obeisances under the form of complete existence and transcendence who is the liberator of the pious devotees from all distresses and the destroyer of the further advances in atheistic temperament of the non-devotee demons for the transcendentalists who are situated in the topmost spiritual perfection he grants their specific destinations purport lord shri krishna is the complete form of all existence both material and spiritual akila means complete or that which is not kila inferior as stated in the bhagavad gita there are two kinds of nature prakriti 
namely the material nature and the spiritual nature or the external and internal potencies of the Lord. The material nature is called apara or inferior and the spiritual nature is called superior or transcendental. Therefore, the form of the Lord is not of the inferior material nature. He is complete transcendence and he is murti or having transcendental form. The less intelligent men who are unaware of his transcendental form describe him as impersonal Brahman. But Brahman is simply the rays of his transcendental body, yasya prabha. The devotees who are aware of his transcendental form render him service. Therefore the Lord also reciprocates by his causeless mercy and thus delivers his devotees from all distresses. The pious men who follow the rulings of the Vedas are also dear to him and therefore the pious men of this world are also protected by him. The impious and the non-devotees are against the principles of the Vedas and so such persons are always hampered from making advances in their nefarious activities. Some of them who are specially favored by the Lord are killed by Him personally, as in the cases of Ravana, Hiranyakashipu, and Kangsa. And thus such demons get salvation and are thereby checked from further progress in their demoniac activities. Just like a kind father either in his favor upon the devotees or his punishment of the non-devotees. He is ever kind to everyone because he is the complete existence for all individual existence. The Paramahansa stage of existence is the highest perfectional stage of spiritual values. According to Srimati Kunti Devi, the Lord is factually understood by the Paramahansas only, as there is gradual realization of the transcendence from impersonal Brahman to localized Paramatma to the personality of Godhead, Purushottama, Lord Krishna. Similarly, there is gradually promotion, there is gradual promotion of one's situation in the spiritual life of sannyas, Kutichaka, Bahudaka. Paribrajakacharya and Paramahansa are gradual progressive stages in the renounced order of life, sannyas. And Queen Kunti Devi, the mother of the Pandavas, has spoken about them in her prayers to Lord Krishna. Canto 1, Chapter 8. The Paramahansas are generally found among both the impersonalists and the devotees. But according to Srimad Bhagavatam, as clearly stated by Kunti Devi, pure bhakti yoga is understood by the Paramahansas. And Kunti Devi has especially mentioned that the Lord descends Paritranaya Sadunam, especially to award bhakti yoga to the Paramahansas. So ultimately, the Paramahansas, in the true sense of the term, are unalloyed devotees of the Lord. Srila Jiva Goswami has directly accepted that the highest destination is Bhakti Yoga by which one renders transcendental loving service to the Lord. Those who accept the path of Bhakti Yoga are the factual Paramahamsas. Since the Lord is very kind to everyone, the impersonalists who accept Bhakti as a means of merging into the Lord's impersonal existence, the Brahma Jyoti, are also awarded their desired destination. He has assured everyone in the Bhagavad Gita 4.11 Yeyatam mam prapadyante tangs tataiva bhajamyaham According to Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti, there are two classes of Paramahansas, namely the Brahmanandis 
impersonalist and the premanandis, devotees. And both are awarded their desired destinations, although the premanandis are more fortunate than the brahmanandis. But both the brahmanandis and the premanandis are transcendentalists, and they have nothing to do with the inferior material nature, full of the existential miseries of life. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, I mean, it's 7.54, it's almost 8 o'clock. It's like it didn't take very long for that time to go by, more than a half an hour. Okay, I'm going to stop here and um, let the devotees release their reflections to the world so that we can examine them and relish them. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Rati Manjari. Hey Rati, Hare Krishna. She says, Jai Guru Maharaj, on the top on the chariot of Akadasi. Yeah, I might add that I had my, me- my best 64 rounds this morning ever. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Oh, Roy, Roy, Roy Kanu, Devi Dasi, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble <coughs> obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. All glories to His Divine Grace. Hare Bo. And from Bhakta Christopher. Hare Krishna, Bhakta Christopher. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Ho. And from Rati Manjari. Yes, Rati. She said, Seeing you makes me want to be a Vaishnavi. Yeah, you're already a Vaishnavi. We'll call you Prabhvi. You know, there's Prabhu and Prabhvi. Hare Krishna. From Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Yes, Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. Thank you for delivering us lovingly the spoken kirtan of Sri the Prabhupada. Mm, nice. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. All glories to His divine grace. Jai ho to all the lucky assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. Mahabhagya. Greatly fortunate. Happy Akadashi to you all. Thank you. And same to you and to everyone. And from Michelle Kwai. Michelle Kwai. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you for delivering your readings every morning. Well, Hare Krishna, it's our pleasure. And from Sudevi Dasi. Hare Krishna, Sudevi Dasi. She says, Dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I missed you the last two days live because my daughter is seriously sick. Oh, we hope she gets well. Hare Krishna. Yes, it's very interesting how Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur, we heard this, I'd like to kind of reflect on this, that Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur said it's very important that we not just talk about Brajalila and Rasalila, but that we also become enlivened to hear about the Srishti Lila, the pastime of, of the creation of the material world. This is a very important point. Um, 
it's it's actually a mental concoction that influences a person to to want to be a gopi or a cowherd boy or uh, it can be a mental concoction. It's also possible that it's a real realization, that desire. But what Vishwanath Chakrabarti is saying is that if one is not interested in hearing all the aspects of Krishna's pastimes, then it's a sure sign that the mental desire to become gopi or a brajbasi is being just that, concocted in the mind. And it's not actually a pure revelation of the person's uh, surup city or natural, uh, original uh, identity in the spiritual world. So th therefore, following the footsteps of the great souls like Vishwana, Chakravarti Thakur, and Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, um, Surup Damodar, uh, it behooves us to follow in their footsteps and not try to imitate them and try to jump up to a higher position than we have actually attained. Then we can be honest Vaishnavas. And then we can hear, by hearing the Bhagavatam all the way through, the way we're doing now, with other devotees, we can, we will hear circumstantially about different things about Krishna, and even different details of um, the Braja Lila. It'll, we'll, we'll read about it. We heard about it in the first canto. We'll hear about it again in the third canto, and in other parts of other other cantos also. Then finally, we get to the tenth canto, and then we hear the full. Uh, well, you can't hear everything about Krishna's Leela because it's unlimited. But we hear the details of Krishna's pastimes in the spiritual world. And then we can become attracted in a natural way, Prabhupada said. In a special and natural way, we can be attracted to a particular pastime and then awaken our natural uh, tendency uh, to be in a certain relationship with Krishna. So I thought that this was a very, very important point made by Prabhupada as he quotes Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, the warning that if you don't want to hear, if you don't like to hear about Krishna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra or about Krishna creating the material world and interacting with all of his different devotees in his different incarnations, then there's a very good chance that if we are dwelling on the Raja Lila and at the same and, and and don't have a taste for anything else. I mean there is a state, honestly, there is a state in which one isn't interested in anything else. But that is the perfect state when one is actually in Vastu City. Vastu City means more than just having realized who they who we are we actually are with Krishna face to face and the and the relationship has begun begun physically. So all these points are given in the Bhagavatam, in the purports of Prabhupada. And we just heard one of them, important one. So yes, let us take this journey together. Srimad Bhagavatam key. There's more. We have they have more coming, sorry. Daitari Hari? Daitari Hari, Hari Bol. Here comes the whales, boys. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thanks for tonight's reading. It really strikes me how inquisitive Pariksit is to know about Krishna in so many aspects, asking such detailed questions. I wish I cared about trying to understand Krishna so comprehensively. <laughs> well, you're on the road, no doubt. Hare Krishna. Jagamohan. Hare Bol Jagamohan. 
Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. Happy Akadashi Day to all. Hearing about the creation and delegation of the universe from the Srima Bhagavatam is so very profound and rich with knowledge on so many levels. Even the demons have a role to play and are still dear to the Lord for the extraordinary efforts of playing such roles. Yes, Samoham Sarvabhute Shu, Nami Dvesha Priyaha. He's not um, partial to anyone, he's equal to everyone. But at the same time, he responds to everyone according to the way they respond to him. So just because the demons are dear to him doesn't mean that he doesn't ignore them when they ignore him. So we shouldn't. You know, we shouldn't aspire to be a demon and then become, you know, so bad that Krishna will come and kill us. Although that may, you know, result in some kind of liberation, still, uh, it's not favorable. It's not recommended by anybody in, in our line of disciplic succession. But yes, yeah, he is equal to everyone. That famous verse, Yeya Tamma Prabhajante, Tongs to Taiva Bajam Yaham, Mama Manuvartante, Manusha Parta Sarvasha. In whatever way one approaches or surrenders into me, I, I reward them accordingly. Everyone is following my path without exception, in every respect. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Subarao Raja Gopal. Jai Subarao Raja Gopal. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you for reading the glorious Srimad Bhagavatam. I came across this verse which Shukadev Goswami says about Parikshit Maharaj, Srimad Bhagavatam 10.16. Vasudeva Kata Prashna Purusham Strin Punatihi Vaktaram Prachakam Shrotrings Tatpada Salilang Yata. The Ganges, emanating from the toe of Lord Vishnu, purifies the three worlds, the upper, middle, and lower planetary systems. Similarly, when one asks questions about the pastimes and characteristics of Lord Vasudeva, Krishna, Three varieties of men are purified, the speaker or preacher, he who inquires, and the people in general who listen. Thank you for your reading, which allows us to listen in and ask questions. Well, that's a very nice uh, quote, which very nicely defines and shows how what we are doing is the right thing. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Rati Manjari. Hari Rati. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my grateful obeisances. Speaking of gratefulness, thanks for the books you sent. They arrived today. Thank you very much. And you gave me that one extra one, and we have a very good devotee to give it to. Thank you so much. Tonight we heard how Sri the Prabhupada quoted different Russian scientists in his Bhaktivedanta oh, purports. Oh, that was very interesting, huh? I was thinking how fortunate these persons are to be quoted in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. Yeah, profound. Profound in the sense that a person of Prabhupada's caliber knows how to engage anything and anyone directly in the service of the Lord. Isn't that incredible? And I think that comes from one of his smaller books also. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I read it. But the, there, there are pla easy journeys to other planets. He quotes some Russian scientists. It may be the same. Anyway, yes. Yes, definitely. This is more from Rati Manjari. Yes, Rati. Also, we heard how the atmosphere of a particular planet is determining the quality of life on that planet. 
I was thinking that in the same way, the atmosphere we surround ourselves with also determines the quality of our spiritual advancement. As His Grace Vaishesh Kapoor was often saying, keep the transcendental vibration going. Yes. Thank you for ensuring that we will be surrounded by the highest sound vibration, at least part of our day, by reading to us daily. Yes, it, the Sangha, the, the word Sangha means association and we are influenced. Sangha is a means of influence. So if we keep ourselves in touch with spiritual knowledge and spiritual persons and a spiritual atmosphere, then we are assured of, of being protected and safe and secure in our spiritual life. And furthermore, we should seek out devotees who are more advanced than us and are of the, and are of the same uh, procl proclivity, procl proclivities in devotional service. In other words, those who are like-minded. This is described, there's a verse, it has the word muli in it. I don't remember the Sanskrit anymore. I'm so old, I can't remember very much. But, uh, yeah, Hare Krishna. And she also said, Rati Manjari says, You are welcome, Guru Maharaj. Happy to serve you by getting you Srila Prabhupada's books. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. I asked Raji to to, to uh, send me a couple of the deluxe versions of the Bhagavad Gita because the newer versions, the very small ones, are hard to read, whereas the, the classic ones are easier to read. Hare Krishna. Prabhupada was always thinking how to make Krishna conscious is more accessible to everyone. But he wouldn't compromise the spiritual principles in order to do that. Hare Krishna. Again and again, thank you so much for these lovely sessions of reflections. They're so uh, uplifting and edifying spiritually purifying Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai Samabeda Bhakta Brinda ki jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo See you tomorrow night same time, same place, same topic as the Lord the Lord's pure devotees uh, dive deeper into the process of creation Hare Krishna See you tomorrow night